giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rachakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the 144,000 and the rest of the elect. This is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives even as Masiach also loved the church and gave himself for it. All right, so I just wanted to speak from this particular verse before we get into today's lesson. A uh, verse which is misunderstood by secular Christians the world over. All right, especially among our people, the children of Israel, who today you may know predominantly as the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. All right. Well, they tend to want to believe that, you know, this means that a man should have unconditional love toward his wife and that the wife should be cherished and put upon a pedestal and be allowed to engage in whatever foolishness she chooses to engage in. And to them, all right, modern day plantation Christianity women, to them, this is what this scripture means. All right. Are you supposed to love your wife? First of all, there is unconditional love, the term in itself, is an oxymoron. All right? Love, unconditioned. Unconditioned love. The two don't go together. That's all and water. It doesn't go together because when you love someone, there's going to be conditions. All right? It's going to be, uh, what's the other term? Uh, shit, it's another term, but uh, it's just you not, when you truly love someone, you, you're not going to let them destroy themselves, okay? And this is why man sets boundaries, all right? And I guess that's the term I was looking for, boundaries. When you love someone, you set boundaries in place. All right. And that's not even what I want to go into. All right. Now, I'm, I'm going into this particular verse due to a, a video that I'm about to show you. A video of some of the dumbest shit I ever heard. There's no other way to put it. Some of the dumbest shit I ever heard in my entire life come right out the pool pit. And the worst part about it is you had men going along with it. All right? But see, the reason why is because the truth has been so long without fruit when it comes to this these scriptures. All right? Especially in these churches on the plantation Christianity, this modern-day secular religion that comes out of the, the, the Vatican. All right? All your religions stem from Catholicism. I'm sorry you think your religion is special and that you, you know, you and your congregation, y'all have the sacred way. All of that shit goes back to Catholicism. All right. Whether it be uh, Seven Day Adventist, uh, Presbyterian, or Mormon and the, the Latter Day Saints. What's that? The uh, Kingdom Hall. Uh, Jehovah's Witness, all that, Baptists, of course, Methodists, all of that, that's Catholicism. <clears throat> all right, y'all are just different variations, different forms of Catholicism. All right, but y'all have been duped into believing that a man is just supposed to cater to his wife, and this is the scripture that they'll use. Now, I want to read up because you see, well, when you understand how the scriptures go, pursuing to Isaiah 28 and 8, it says, you know, matter of fact, in Isaiah 28, beginning around verse 8. We'll go to verse 9. All right. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. It says, Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? 
them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So whom, you know, shall the Most High through the Holy Spirit teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk. All right. You, you, you came up under the right doctrine, the right teachings. All right. And you, you've grown thereby as, uh, second Peter two and two states desire you to sincere milk that you may grow thereby. And, uh, that's how you come up in the ranks, so to speak, in understanding dealing with this truth. You start with the milk. That's your basis. That's the basics. The basics are your basis for your foundation. So it says, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. This is a baby sucks on his breast, his mother's breast at birth. All right, because that's um, how his body is nourished. He can't, uh, he's not able to process adult food. Now, verse 10 gives you the formula on how you go through and understand these scriptures. So it says in verse 10, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, precepts are laws, all right? And it says line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. And that's how you understand the, script, the scriptures, all right? Sometimes you go from precept to precept to draw forth understanding and then sometimes you got to go line by line or line upon line all right understanding that to really understand Ephesians 5 and 25 you got to go line upon line going up to the 23rd verse of 2022 all right check what this says Ephesians 5 and 22 Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. And that's all it's saying. See, we can't do 25 until y'all do verse 22. And this is the part that no one tells these entitled, these, these narcissistic and entitled women. Nobody tells them, well, your obligation is up in verse 22. And I'll read it again. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Wives. All right. And that man don't have to put a ring on your finger to be a, a, wife, a, a husband. So all that put a ring on it bullshit. You know, all that bullshit. Um. I didn't read nowhere where Isaac put a ring on Rebecca's finger, nor Jacob put a ring on either Leah or uh, Rachel's finger. Neither, you know, any of the other marriages that I read about in the scriptures, I read no mention of a ring. A ring don't make you married. All right. It's another type of ring, but we ain't going to go into that. But the act of sex, all right, when a man um, humbles a woman, all right, whoever the, the woman lays down, whatever man a woman lays down with for her first time, that's her husband, okay? And so... Uh, Right now, everything is all out of order. This is why the Lord called this generation an adulterous generation because a woman will have sex. You know, she's in junior high. Have sex with a, with a guy. Or a number of guys. Go to high school. Do the same shit. Graduate from high school. Go to college. And then she's introduced into a whole world of whoredoms. And so she might think that, you know, she's the guy that she chooses to walk down the aisle with. I'm, I'm going to finally settle down. I'm 38 years old. 
I, I didn't got 50, 50 bodies on my roster, but I'm fixing to settle down, and this is my husband. It doesn't work like that. For a woman, the man who took your virginity is your husband, all right? So, you know, well, that's how it goes. And if for whatever reason you can't be with that man, but you find yourself with another man, just submit yourself to that man and give up that give up that whore's forehead that you got from this world. All right. But this is what the scripture says. All right. And I noticed this about Babylonian women. They quick to point out what a man should do and how a man should act and what a man should say, how we should talk. They're very critical about us me, as men. You know, not any particular, just men in general. They quick to tell you how you ain't adequate or how you are inadequate. All right. But no one ever flips the table and point the finger at them. And we do here at Great Millstone, by the way. We we will put we will put that spotlight on the black woman. All right. That's why they don't like us. We hold them accountable. So again, here the scripture says, oh, whenever, whenever you get critical of them, you know, you, you, you're everything under the sun. You know, uh, what's that term they, they like to use? Uh, well, you're chauvinistic, you're, uh, Shit, they'll throw out gay. They, they're quick to say you gay. You know. But in the meantime, the real gay motherfuckers don't, don't, nothing gets said about them. But the heterosexual man gets called gay. But it's, it's, it's okay for the gay motherfuckers to be gay. So it's just a whole hypocritical, nonsensical world that we live in today as men and have to deal with, put up with this bullshit to the Lord raise us up then we're going to get respect but to get back to these scriptures all right here in Ephesians 5 and 22 it says wise this is addressing you women with husbands or who have men in your lives for you women today you got a man in your life all right that man is your husband so wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Because that word submit, you, you'll get away with calling them a bitch before you could, you know, get away with saying, telling them, I want you to be submissive. I truly believe they would rather be called a bitch than for you to say, I want you to be submissive unto me. Oh, that's a dirty word. They're going to go for your throat. I ain't no submit, submit to no man. I ain't blah, 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 blah. The, the teeth, the fangs come out. They start growling and slobbering and shit. I'm, I'm strong. I'm a strong black woman. I don't submit to no man. And that's fine. That's fine. Because all women are not in their proper nature. They think they are, but they're just whores. They're beast whores or whore beasts. However you want to put it, they they have a voracious appetite for being whores, all right? But see, that's the trade-off. No one no one wants to talk about that because the woman, she can do no wrong. Oh, let them be. She's she's immaculate, all right? Yeah, I go back to that, you know, that Virgin Mary, that Immaculate Conception bullshit. All right, to see how that shit begins to trickle down now in the church. The woman can do no wrong. All right, but again, that's the trade off in verse 22. So let's read on. It says in verse 23, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Masiak is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. That says the man 
is the savior of his body, all right, which is what? His home, his family. Man is the head, women and children are the body. That's his family, that's, that's his body, you know, his personal church, if you will. And that man is the savior of his household, if the Lord chooses to have mercy, all right? Because remember the scripture does say, Luke 17 and 32, remember Lot's wife. All right, so the Lord can save you and destroy your wife. But if your wife is to make it, more than likely it'll be because of her head, her husband. All right, verse 24 is uh, reiterating verse 22 and 23. Uh, Actually, it says, therefore, as the church is subject unto Masiach, so let the wives be, be to their own husbands in everything. You got that? In everything. You don't get to pick and choose. Oh, well, I cook and clean, but he ain't going to tell me what to wear. Oh, well, you know, I, I dress modest. But I work too, so when I come home, I'm, I'm tired. I ain't cooking in everything. No, you're going to cook? And that man tell you to cover up? You're going to cover up. But as a nation, we don't have, as men, we don't have that in our women. It, you know, and it, there are exceptions. Some out there who try to do right, who reverence their husbands. All right, but they are few and far in between. Now, I just want to go into that to set this up how Christianity, I'm going to show you where a lot of that shit comes from. These doctrines of men teaching shit that they are not up in these poor pits, just as lost and confused as the day they was born and sitting here speaking as if they know what fucking time it is and, and dictating wrong shit to people. Now, I'm going to let you hear this fucking idiot, which I used to have some respect for him because he stood as a man, even though what he was standing for was wrong. But he stood as a man. That's what he believed. And he stood on it, even though if his beliefs are wrong, I can respect that. You know, even though the Lord going to put your ass to death. But this has made me lose all, well, what little respect I had for this dude. After this, that shit was done. Listen to this, fool. I mean, you can read it and see. <laughs> you see what it say. My money is her money. Her money is her money. And listen to this clown, man. My money is her money. Now, if she got a job, her money is not my money. That's right. My money is my money, and her money is her money. Right. My money is my money. My money is her money, and her money is her money. My money it belongs to her and her money. But hold up, I like this. <laughs> hold up, hold up. I like the shorts now. You can go back and rewind it. You used to can you know rewind it. But you see the simple niggas that the the woman. You look at them two young women. In the crowd, and they sitting there looking at him like, like he a damn fool. But then you got the man back there shaking his head, like, yeah, that's right, that's right, pastor, that's right. Look at these motherfuckers. It's my Look. money, my money is her money, and her money is her money. My money, it belongs. Up. Jake back there with the Dolomite hat, he just as simple as the day is long, and just nodding his head in agreement. And, and you could tell he looked pussy whoop. Sitting up there with a with your head covered. You know, we didn't even do that at my church in the world. You took your hat off, you came into the unless that was a woman. You can't even tell no more today. You can't even goddamn tell that. Just assuming that's a man, but usually his, his congregation is full of women. So I'm just assuming that's a man back there with the hat on. And look at the two. The one chick, you know, with the glasses, she look like she, she might kind of be going for it, but the <laughs> the sister next to her, like, this nigga, 
I mean, you can just look at them. But anyway, I'm going to let it play. My money is my money. My money is her money. And her money is her money. My money, it belongs to her. And her money belongs to her. Her money don't belong to me. That's right. Nope. 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 That's right. Her money do not belong to me. Because God tell the man, you were. You were. That's you right. You sweat. Your brow. Your brow. That's right. If she's a good woman, and there's something that needs to be done in the house, and if I'm where I can't do it, she'll step up the plate. But I ain't looking for her to carry the load. That's right. I ain't looking for her to carry the load. That's right. God command the man, man to work. Work by the sweat of his brow. His brow. My money is... So you, you hear the foolishness. And this is just, you know... Because he was fool enough to publish it. This go every Sunday. It's foolishness coming out of these pulpits, these secular pulpits, every Sunday, especially among our people, the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. They're subjected, or they are subjecting themselves to this type of wrong teaching. And just nodding and going, yeah, yeah pastor, that's right. This is it's her money. Why? And I just read the Lord made you the head. The Lord made man the head for a reason, because these women and Babylon is a testament to it. These women are undisciplined. And and. Unscrupulous. All that shit they talk. You know, that's all it is. It's just talk. And the women that are disciplined, like I'm saying, women cannot be disciplined. No, women actually can be disciplined. There are disciplined women, but I guarantee you, just as they say, behind every strong man is a strong woman. That's bullshit. Behind every disciplined woman is either her father had a strong influence in her life or she has, she has a man in her life. All right. And for these women that's single, oh, well, I know, you know, so and so and such and such, she did this, that, and the third, right, for her job, for her daddy, Esau. But just leave them to their own devices, is what I'm talking about. They're undisciplined and they're very destructive. All right. Women left to their own devices are the most destructive force. On this earth. Babylon is a testament to that. All right. So. Now you can see why I wanted to start. With Ephesians the fifth chapter. Because this clown. Said my money. Is her money. And her money. Is her money. So we were just put here on this earth. To be fools. For women. All right, so she can just hit you up with a surplus of money and do only your Hawabashim, your Hawashi knows what with that money because it's her money, right? She could be ordering male prostitutes, she could be ordering strippers, who knows what she'd be doing with that money because that's her money. So, this is why I wanted to start off here. Because people have this, well, these passages misconstrued. So we're going to read Ephesians 5 and 25 again, and I'm going to make a point. Because he wanted to go way to Genesis to break down Genesis, the third chapter, wrong. When the Lord said, you know, you should eat, eat your bread by the sweat of thy brow. Right, that means you're going to work. But as a woman is a helpmate to us, she going to work too. And her earnings is going to contribute to me, not to her. It's going to contribute really to us. But that's where I come in as head. All right. Now, if I want to say, and he got a right to say that. If, if he wants to say my money is my money and my money is my wife's money, he got the right to do that as head of his household. 
What he don't need to be doing is preaching that from the pulpit as if that's sound doctrine. That is not sound doctrine. That's how you want to run your household. You run it that way. But don't be sitting up there preaching that that's how things go because we fixing to prove that's not how things go. And again, Ephesians 5 and 25, husbands, love your wives, even as Masiach also loved the church and gave himself for it. So this is what they never ask. How did the, how did the Lord love the church? And I'm going to bring out this example since we're talking about money. You brothers already know where I'm going. All right, so in Matthew chapter 25, all right, we're going to start at verse 15. All right, so the book of St. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14, it says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Let's get this right. All right, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants. Now, a woman is a servant, all right? A woman, when you take a wife or a woman, that's to take onto you a servant. As the Lord put it, he wanted to go back to Genesis, the third chapter, a helpmeet, all right? A servant. So it says, who call his own servants, all right, and delivered unto them his goods. Let's see what these goods are. And unto one he gave five talents. Oh, he's talking about money. So these goods are money because a talent is a weight of silver or anything. It's a weight, all right. But here we're discussing money, all right. So it could have been gold. It could have been silver. Talent is just a measure. Of weight. All right. So it says, and unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. So this one servant. He took the talents that the Lord gave him, and what did he do? He went to go make him some money. So he made five for himself. So now he's sitting on ten. He got the five that the Lord gave him, and then he went and made him five. So now he got five dollars, right? Let's see what he got. Verse 17, and likewise, he that received two he also gained other two. So he took his money and made him some money with it. Shit, I got me some money too, man. You know? So they out there doing business. They done came up. They done made them some money. Verse 18. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, I will make thee ruler over many things. Into thou, into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not straw. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, 
that thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. All right. For unto everyone that hath shall be given and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. All right. It says, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. All right. So you heard what the Lord's response. All right. In verse. Uh, going back to 27 is the point. It says, thou artist, artist, therefore, to have put my money to the exchangers. And then at my coming. I should have received mine own with usury. What's the usury? That which they earned. All right. That which they earned. The Lord didn't, you know, tell them servants, you know, oh, you know, give me my money and you keep the money. That's your money that you made. I didn't want my fire. And you keep that fire because that's your money. All right. Because we are the bride of the Lord. All right, we're looking for that, that wedding feast, which is in Matthew, the 22nd chapter. We're looking to be a part of that feast to be married or joined unto our Lord. So we are his brides preparing ourselves. All right. So the Lord ain't got that attitude of, well, my money is my money, but y'all money is, is y'all's money. Y'all just keep whatever. No, everything that we earn. All right, and that money is the fruit. You know, from beginning with our own understanding, we're supposed to increase in our own understanding to be able to be more effective and proficient teachers and speakers in this truth. All right? And then the men that we bring in, all right, it's not, they don't belong to us. Those are the men, of, they belong to the Lord. So that's what's being illustrated through these talents. The Lord didn't actually give us money. He gave us our own, uh, uh, own uh, dispensation or portions, if you will, of the Holy Spirit. Okay. And in order to manifest the treasures of this truth. All right, and that's what the Lord want to see. He don't want to see you at the same level that you was at when you came into the truth. He want to see you then grow in this truth. But the point here being in the parable itself, the Lord didn't say, well, you know, I just want my five and whatever else you call That's your money. You keep that. No, he, he just said he want his plus usury. Why? Because what's his is his. <laughs> And what's ours, his wife is his. This is why the scripture says, husbands, love your wives, even as Masiach loved the church. What does that mean? That mean, uh, as the scripture put it, I have to paraphrase it. Uh, you have to deal with women according to knowledge. Okay. You can't deal with women according to emotions. Let me see if I can find that. But then you get in trouble, you get caught up, and they always win. Because that's their turf. When I say they, the women, when you get to getting emotional, you done lost. You done lost all right? You done gave up the high ground. And your footing, and you gave them the advantage. As men, we never we have to deal with women according to knowledge. Let me see if it comes up.
Okay, so. Yep, we'll start here. This first Peter chapter three, verse six, it says, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. That's another cuss word in today's vernacular dealing with women. Oh, you you better obey me. You saw the chick at the at the altar, you know, with with her fiance, and they supposed to be taking their vows. And she refused to say obey. And Jake, in his simplicity, you know, thanks to the niggas like the pastor who was up there um, doing the ceremony, you know, as he was saying, yeah, we went through this in counseling and, and all of this. But the whole church is laughing it off because she got she has the right. She has the power. She don't have to submit to him. He better submit to her. You know, so no one condemned that woman for being up there making a fool out of, first and foremost, herself and then to her, her man. What you mean? You don't want to submit and obey your man? You know, but he's standing up there just as goofy as he, you know, he young. I, I've been there. Young, don't know shit about women. Damn sure don't know shit about life. And he just standing there simple as can be with a goofy ass smile laughing and shit. And she just letting you know here on this altar that she's going to be hell in your life. And you find that comical. Now this was just on the short, but this is how you, this how you women feel. So I'm just saying obey is another dirty word to women. They'd rather be called a bitch than for you to say, obey me. All right? And this is why y'all get called bitches. This is, this is why they call you bitch. All right? Because you out here like, like a dog in heat, running and hopping on every dick that, you know, that you think is is uh profitable. This is why, you know, here in Houston, even Apostle Tahar had to do a video on it. It spoke about the 128% spike in uh syphilis cases among black women. All right. And I told this to another black woman, and you know what she did? Immediately went to defend the black woman and said, Well, they got it from the men. I said the article didn't mention me. You know, I'm, I don't get involved in all of that uh, emotional bullshit. I just say hey, that that wasn't in the article. The article said black women. So you deal with that. I don't know why you got, you know, they got to take up for each other in their wrong. You know, if, if niggas do something that's wrong, yeah, hey, that's them niggas. You know, and if they did something worth condemning, I'm going to condemn it. I'm not going to take up or try to make it, well, yeah, they probably, you know, yeah, the black woman, it, they probably raised by the black woman. No, and they probably was, but as a man, you got to take accountability. So, you know, just kind of going off on the tandem, uh, on the tangent. But anyway, uh, yeah, it says, uh, <laughs> even as Sarah obeyed, this is First Peter 3 and 6, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, you know, yeah, do not say submit to the modern Babylonian woman, and it don't matter the color, all right, but especially the black woman. Don't say submit, submissive, and please don't say obey or obedient. I'm a dog. I'm a yes, you a dog, bitch. And sit your ass down somewhere, and maybe you'll be respected as a woman. 
But anyway, it says, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. It says, likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. Now, I just gave you knowledge on how the Lord, we read, you know, husband, love your wives, even as Masayak loved the church. All right. So when the Lord give us something, he said he want his with usury. Ain't no yours is yours and mine is mine with Yahweh Shai. Or his is ours and ours is ours. No. He come in as head, letting it be known. I'm the head, I'm Lord, and I want what I gave you plus some. Whatever you made, give it up. And we got to go back to that. That's why these women so strong-headed right now because we as men have been so fucking weak. But as long as, you know, you got uh, these simps out here. They always going to have somewhere to run and go hide. That's why I like, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and the Mac, Pretty Tony told, he told, I believe he was talking to, uh, I can't even remember that nigga name no more, uh, Goldie. He told Goldie, you just a rest haven for hoes. And that's, you know, the fact for so many niggas out here, you know, masquerading and parading around here as men, but they really just rest haven for hoes. Let these women struggle. All right? Our situation is, is not going to get no better by you sitting up here babying or or you know, saving bitches. Let them be strong and independent. That's their mantra. Let them be that. Y'all be strong and independent, you know. That's why it's good to passport bros, you know. They letting them be known. Fuck you hoes. And that's what it is. So, uh, yeah, again, First Peter 3 and 7, likewise, ye husbands. Dwell with them according to knowledge. All right. What did, what did uh, Isaiah 33 and 6 say? All right. And knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. All right. That's paraphrasing. But right. The knowledge of this word. All right. And if you're going to deal with a woman, you better deal with her. According to knowledge, you better understand these scriptures and apply these scriptures. Be a man, all right? Or either don't even deal with them. Because they get puffed up in the head, think that they're not only that they're equal with us, but that they're somehow superior to us. And then you'll get exactly what you got here in Babylon to where you can't even get a decent woman. You ain't there's you can't get no decent woman here in Babylon. They're 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 hugged out, all right, by the time they pass the flower of their age, uh, most of them. Then once they pass the flower of their age, if they do maintain any type of uh chastity and purity. They won't have it for much long, all right? Especially with today's society, you know, social media and all of this madness that's going on, all of this depravity in the world, and there's no strong male presence in these homes. Yeah, these these women are just prey. Nahum spoke about that. Nahum, the third chapter, spoke about that. Our people are praying. The children are the ones that, you know, you get the children first. Or you go after the weak and the unsuspecting. You don't go after the strong or the wise. You go after the weak and the simple. 
All right, to turn them out, put them on your program. That's why the Lord told us, well, that's why we married young. So that we could put our wife on our program. You know? One man might, he might get up at 7 in the morning. Another man might get up at 3 in the morning. Well, shit, you need to get up. If I get up at 3 in the morning, you need to be up at 2. And and have my lunch packed and ready. And if I'm going to eat breakfast or whatever, all that shit need to be ready when I'm heading out the door. You know, you got to put your wife on your program. But anyway, uh, see, this is this is the thing. And we're not dealing with women according to knowledge. At Great Millstone, we are, but as a whole, as a nation, we deal with women according to f- emotions and feelings. That's, a, that's all America is good for. Babylon is good for that, programming you through your emotions, you know. And the woman talking about, he just don't, you know, he's, he's too controlling. You know, and turn on the waterworks and all of that. A man's supposed to control as head. Control the situation. You know, anyway, let's go through this. First Peter 3 and 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them, your women, your wives, according to knowledge. Give honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Weaker, that doesn't sound like equality to me. That means she's weaker than me. Yeah, I'm weak, but she's weaker. All right? She is the weaker vessel, the lesser vessel. All right? And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. So just understand that, man. And Geno Jennings was talking about some shit that was not according to knowledge. You know, sitting there talking that sucker ass simp shit from the pulpit. Yeah, and and that's why you see majority of the people in this church are women. All right. But that's not according to knowledge. Matter of fact, that's straight foolishness. That's straight foolishness to let your wife have some money unchecked and that's her money. What she need money for? (laughs) It's your wife. I'm sure this sucker ass, I'm sure he paying the bills in the house. I know she ain't going half on nothing. Or the congregation paying for everything, I'm sure. Congregation paying for the house and the cars. What does she need money for? Of her own. Anyway. That's the lesson. I pray that you brothers are edified. Until the next one. Shalom.